Welcome everybody. This session is um, specifically geared towards parts and parts management. And so I just wanted to kind of give a brief overview of what parts are. Um, parts is a fairly new addition to the system. Um, been two years maybe. Um, and basically the parts are to, to help further describe um, items in the system underneath a bib. And most often in the public library setting, we see them used for DVD sets or audiobook sets. And one of the reasons why parts is helpful is that it gives libraries flexibility um, in how they circulate the materials, um, whether they want to circulate the whole set together or whether they want to separate it out. So I'm going to start out by um, bringing one up. So this is a popular TV series, um, NCIS. Um, season six is the one that comes up first and you can see that under the listing there's another column called part um, and in this case all of the libraries are choosing to circulate it as a complete set but if we scroll down and look at others um, we've got one here um, the 11th season um, where you know uh, this library has chosen to separate them out into the individual desks, discs. Um, and then there's other examples where um, they'll take two discs together and, and circulate those. So um, so that's kind of a brief overview of the, the differences. And I think this one um, is good. I'm looking to make sure there's no cleanup necessary on this one. Okay. Here's one that doesn't have a part. Okay. Okay, here's another one where the discs are separated out. So those terms, those part names, are defined under, if we click on a title, and go to Actions for this Record, and go to Manage Parts, this lists all of the part names that are associated with this particular bibliographic record. Right now there's only one um, because no one has chosen to separate this one out. But if a library came along and wanted to add their items to this particular bib and they were separating them out, then they would click on this new monographic part and define it and then, then they would be able to choose that for their item. I'll go over that again um, in an example that I know that needs to have some cleanup. So I'll back out of here and do a new search. There's a series called A Place to Call Home. And I'm going to actually narrow this down to the DVD. I could have done that in the initial search and I forgot. Okay, so here we have some video recordings that um, this one does not have parts defined at all. This one does, but only one of the libraries has um, put that in. And so there's some cleanup to do on this one. Um, 
so basically I'm going to choose this one and show you what to do if you need to add parts to your own record. So I'm going to get into Holdings Maintenance and I'm going to go down to the Legrand copy. Okay, you can see that the part column is blank for Legrand's and my permission level allows me to go ahead and correct this. Um, but your permission levels will only let you correct your own. So you might either need to contact the library or contact me um, if you notice that parts aren't defined for somebody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the item and I can either right click on it or go up to actions for selected rows and I'm going to choose replace barcode. We're not going to actually replace the barcode but that does allow us to get to the screen that has this drop down box next to the barcode that allows us to choose a part. And so we're going to choose complete set and then choose rebarcode update items. Okay, so that one is corrected. Now the reason this becomes important um, is that it affects the holds. Um, when somebody goes to place a hold on this particular bibliographic record, it will change the priority as to who gets to fulfill the hold based upon these parts settings. And so it's good to stay consistent and if, if parts are used in a record, it's good to have all of the items in the record have their parts defined. So you can see if we come back here, we can now see that um, two of them have complete set defined. Now other cases that this will come up is, is in audiobook sets. Um, there's also situations where um, what we call monographic serials will need parts. I'm going to take a look at, do another search for see what we come up with for Oregon Driver's Manual. This is something that comes out every year and um, rather than having individual records for every single year, which builds up <laughs> quite a bit in the system, what we've chosen to do is have one bibliographic record with everybody's items underneath and then we use the part to distinguish what year it is. And um, this one um, is up to date. Um, Grant County, we need to add a part for there. And sometimes we come across um, situations where because parts is, is a fairly new thing, we have some older records that um, don't have parts completely defined. But um, so it's another example of a situation where we would use parts. Anybody have any questions at this point? I have a question and it may be, can you hear me? Yeah. So this is Ellen. Um, it may be, yeah, and the, the answer may be implicit in what you're talking about, but um, for some reason, I think I had the idea that if you had a, um, say like an NCIS season six, and it was all in one container, um, that you didn't need to add the part. But it sounds like you actually should have the part on 
on anything that's you know got more than one episode and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we at one time talked about the fact that um, if everybody was doing it the same way, um, in other words, circulating the whole season, then there really wasn't a need for a part. Um, I think um, to be proactive, mm -hmm. if we think that there's a possibility that somebody's going to circulate it a different way, of going ahead and putting our part in there so that it's clear. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Sure. Thank you. Um, any mentors want to qualify that statement or does that sound accurate? That sounds accurate. Okay. Um, it's, it's one of those things where um, we don't know what's going to come along the road and if somebody ends up adding parts because they decide to split it out and ours isn't defined as complete we're kind of we're having to catch up <laughs> uh -huh. you know rather than being proactive so my suggestion was because these are handled different ways different places um, it's probably a good idea to add the part from the get-go um, and just make it clear that we're circulating this as a complete set. Now, one of the things that has come up um, recently, um, and I added a new document to the SAGE website. I'll see if I can... Okay. Um, under cataloging, um, we now have a document that lists parts terminology because sometimes it's difficult to know what to name the part. Um, complete sets pretty easy. Okay, is it going to come up? I'm having some issues with this computer um, as far as the word goes. So let me go to assigning parts. Yeah. Beth, do you want me to put it up? That would be wonderful, Dia. Sorry about this, okay. folks. No, it's okay. Okay, it should be up. I can see it. How about the rest of you folks? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so this just gives some general guidelines um, that were established um, back when we, we started using parts, just so we could have some consistency. Um, that way the patron isn't confused, and um, the more we use common language, the more we don't have um, things separated out as much. So the first indication is complete set for series, use both disk numbers, and, and we saw those in the examples that I had up on the screen where someone had disks one through two um, uh, for an item and then they had disks three and three through four, that kind of thing. Um, there's also multi-volume sets. Um, you don't see this often that we find the need to use parts on them, but there are some sets um, of non-fiction books that are circulated individually, and we want the ability for the patrons to be able to request them individually, and so that's another reason to use parts.
So are there any other questions? Beth, did you see the question from Jenny about could we add a new one? Say 2011-12, not that we would, but just so people can see how to do that. Yeah, no, that's a good suggestion. Um, do you want to hand over, did you make me presenter again, Dia? I will. Give me okay. this moment. <laughs> that's fine. Almost forgot I needed to do that. There you go. Okay. So let me hop back to our example. So we've got the Oregon driver manual. So let's go into, um, let's click on that. And we go to actions for this record. Manage parts. Okay, and so we've got some um, ranges. So we've got 2007 to 2009, but we don't have 2000. Let's see, we could add a 2010 to 2011. Is that a correct age range, you guys? I mean, not age range, but year range? Yes. Okay. Because it's a two-year range. It's a two-year range, so should it technically be 2000? Some of, the older ones, some of the older ones were a little bit different. Yeah, that's fine. I know, why... that was some weird ones, but it's now two years. Okay. So this 2016 to 2017, is that... Okay, that's a two-year range, not a fiscal range. <laughs> I guess that's where I'm getting at. Okay. I think it's a biennium. Okay. So it, we've now got this new description, and the reason it added it to the end um, is because we just added it. I think if we come back in, it will sort it. Um, so I can get back out and see if it does, in fact, do that, or click on Reload. You can now see that the 2010-2011 one is in sequential order. Um, so it just tacked it on at the end because it was a brand new edition. So if we were going to um, go through the Oregon Driver Manual bib, let's go back to the OPAC view. And um, Thankfully, a lot of um, folks having this, I mean, they put their year in the year range in the call number, which really helps identify which ones are there. So I don't know whether we're going to come across any that are 2010 to 2011. Um, and actually, um, it's been recommended at the SAGE level that we do add those call numbers, yes. that date to the call numbers as well, just to give it real clear. Yeah, it does. And so there's some situations, because it's not on the call number, it's hard for us to do any cleanup because we can't tell um, what it is. Um, I noticed this this Hepner branch one um, does not have a part, and it does clearly, um, although I think that's a mistype, um, that I'm going to go ahead and, and go into holdings maintenance and fix this one. as another example of how to fix fix your item if you aren't going ahead and putting the part in when you catalog it. So we've got this one right here that does not have a part. I'm going to right click on it, replace barcode. And I'm going to Oh, we don't have a part for this one. We have to add a part first. 
I do. So good I have example to, of it. It is a good example. It's like, oh, I got in here and my part's not here. So, okay, <laughs> we'll back up. And I can go ahead and close this tab and go back to my actions for this record. Go ahead and manage parts. And new monographic part. And so it's 2018 to 2019. Click on save. All right, now I can go back into Holdings Maintenance. Right click on this again. Replace barcode. Two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. Click on rebar code, update items, and now that part designation is there and correct. All right. So there's some here as well. Um, that have the 2018-2019. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was curious. Um, the part was there last week when you added. Interesting. I think it was when I did as well. Because I've just added for a couple of libraries. Not sure why it was deleted, but it's back in there now. <laughs> so we can go ahead and, and update some of these um, that, that don't have the parts. Which shows why there, it's another really good reason that the dates and whatnot are in the call number. So if something should happen to the parts, there's a backtrack for it. Okay, now this one that says 2017-2018, um, that indicates an overlap, right? Or is this a fiscal year, July to June? That's a good question. I think at this point when you do clean up, you just have to take it at face value because there are several 1718s. So we just create a label that indicates that and move on. Anna's going to take a look at that. So I brought up an example that maybe wasn't as clean <laughs> um, as it could have been, but it's situations you're going to come across. And um, I guess if there's a question, sending a message out to the listserv um, for discussion would, would be a good thing. And um, yeah. Hood Rivers is the 2017-2018. Um, but to, to reiterate, the reason that we're going to this extra work to add this part in here is for the benefit of the patron. And um, so that they are getting the copy they want rather than just a random copy which is what would happy happen um, if this part designation wasn't here. Um, and they might be very unhappy when they got their um, driver manual that it wasn't the year they expected. And that has come up before. And we've had patrons question, you know, why, why this is happening. So we're just trying to get parts cleaned up in the system. So it happens very seldom in the system. Any other ideas of things that we need to cover regarding parts? Do we want to look at another one? Um, this is Ellen. Yeah. Do you have any for uh, like a manga um, graphic novel series that you could show us? I don't think that the manga the manga novels are a series, um, uh -huh. but they they're not like a set where people would separate them. 
Oh, okay. So there's no need to use parts on manga at this t point anyway. Um, now, if there was a, um, like a set of books that sometimes is circulated as a unit and sometimes circulated individually, I'm trying to think of an example of that. Um, gosh, what's a popular one? scrambling now but there there might be a set of books that that could happen to but it's it's kind of infrequent mm -hmm. um, Jenny says fruit basket I don't think I've heard of that one before so let's check it out Catherine and I had to do a lot of mangas a while back and it we got a little bit confused about the um, about it yeah and they are a different creature and I do hope to have a session just on that um, um, in the near future um, I'm looking at these so these this is an this is a graphic novel series but I don't see anybody that has um, like has multiple items underneath it that are different. Um, it looks like it one of the like things just about, one item about the manga is that they should be individual. Yes, cataloged individually. Um, and that's, uh, we decided to do them individually um, because there is so much uniqueness to each individual item. Sometimes the illustrators are different um, and it allows you to be more descriptive about this particular one rather than trying to generalize. Um, so the patron's getting more information. Um, so that's why we didn't have to use parts with these because we decided um, a little while back to let's make these unique um, and not put them all together under one bibliographic record. So that's another reason. But it's a very good question, Ellen, because if we had put them together under one bib and just mm -hmm. have part numbers, we would need to use parts. Um, yeah, now that I'm remembering about it, I think there were some that used to be used to under be. the same yeah yeah, yeah. and then we decided so. to separate them out and there might be still some cleanup ones out there um, and um, if you come across one sending it to us would be great so we can get it um, in the new format but you're right that it, it used to be that some um, had had been on a combined bib and then it was confusing to know which one you were going to be getting unless you looked at the call number um, or unless parts were assigned. Thanks, Beth. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for the question. Any other questions out there? Well, I'm not hearing any questions, <laughs> so I guess that we can wrap things up for today. But if you think of something after the session is over, um, please um, send send an email out um, either to me personally or to the SageCat listserv. And thanks for everyone who joined. I'll get this recording up on the website. And uh, for those folks that weren't able to j join us today, plus a refresher for any of us anytime we need it. And thanks again. Thank you. Thanks a lot.